Hello everyone. This is part one of chapter two, the circulatory system. In this lesson, I will cover sections 2.1 through 2.4. 2.1, a matter of the heart. The circulatory system consists of tubes or pipes and a pump. Its purpose is to transport blood through the body. This blood contains substances. Examples of such substances are oxygen from the lungs, nutrients, that is food from your intestines, hormones and water. All of these substances must go to your cells. Your cells make waste, such as carbon dioxide. This waste has to be transported away. Your blood does its job. Your heart is the pump of your body. Without this pump, blood and the substances in it cannot move. The heart is made of cardiac muscle tissue. The heart has four chambers. The top ones are called atria. One atrium, two atria. The bottom ones are ventricles. Make sure you remember that left and right are actually switched. Have a look at the picture. The left atrium, the left ventricle, the right ventricle and the right atrium as we go clockwise. The beat of your heart is controlled by the pacemaker a bundle of nerves on your heart that connects to your brain. This helps to control how fast the heart should beat. If your cells need more oxygen, your heart will beat faster to bring more blood to your cells. Some people have an artificial pacemaker, which you can see in the picture. This is a battery operated device that controls the heartbeat. 2.2. What goes around comes around. Here we see a picture of the entire circulatory system. As you can see, all the places are numbered. Number one is in the right ventricle. So first we start with the pulmonary circulation. In the pulmonary circulation, blood flows from the right ventricle through the pulmonary artery to the lungs to pick up oxygen. It then flows back to the heart through the pulmonary veins, where the blood enters at the left atrium. Then we have the systemic circulation, and we're now at point four, the left atrium. Here, in the systemic circulation, blood flows from the left atrium to the left ventricle, then through the aorta and to the body cells. Here, the body cells get oxygen and give away their carbon dioxide and other nutrients, and other waste, I mean. Then we are at eight. The vena cava bring the deoxygenated blood back to the right atrium. Number 11. And as you can see, we're back at one. Now the coronary circulation is actually the circulatory system's part of the blood flow to the heart muscle. The heart muscle itself also needs oxygen, and so it has both arteries, coronary arteries, and veins, coronary veins, on its outside. The coronary arteries give oxygen and nutrients to the heart muscle, and the coronary veins bring all the waste back and away from the heart muscle. 
2.3 highways and byways. Arteries move blood away from the heart. Here you can see an artery. It has lots of muscles on its outside wall. They are so muscular because they have to withstand the high blood pressure. Because of all this muscle, the diameter is actually not so large. Now veins move blood to the heart. There is almost no blood pressure here, so they need the help of valves and muscles, muscles from your arms or legs or any other part of your body, to move the blood back to the heart. Capillaries connect arteries with veins. They are the ones that give oxygen and nutrients to the cells and they pick up carbon dioxide and other waste substances from your cells. And because their walls are very thin, only one cell layer thick, this transport of oxygen and nutrients and carbon dioxide and waste to and from the cells is very easy here. But there's almost no blood pressure. I've given you a table in your notebook with all the differences between the arteries and the veins and the capillaries, so make sure you learn them really well. 2.4 blood pressure and heart disease. Blood pressure and heart disease are very important topics here. Now look at the definition of blood pressure. It is the measurement of the pressure on the artery walls. Remember that only arteries have pressure. Now a little bit about the pulse. Remember you can take your pulse, that is measure your heartbeat, at your wrist and at your neck because here the arteries are close to the skin. Blood pressure is made up of two parts, a high and a low number. The high number is the systole. This is the blood pressure when the ventricles contract. Diastole is the lower number and this is the blood pressure when the ventricles relax and the atria contract. Now blood pressure can change. You can see the reasons here. Blood pressure can temporarily get higher when you are angry or when you sport or when you're scared because organs need more oxygen in these cases and so your heart beats faster. But when you are relaxed, such as sleeping or reading, your muscles and organs don't need that much oxygen, so your heartbeat slows down. When blood pressure is always high, this is called hypertension. This is an important word. Hypertension is very dangerous. Here we can see some reasons for hypertension. An important reason is a disease called atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is caused by a plaque. A plaque is a piece of fat that blocks your artery. Blood pressure here can then get dangerously high because there's only a very small opening in your artery through which blood can go. So the artery can burst. Now a stroke happens when a blood vessel in the brain bursts open. And when coronary arteries, remember the ones on your heart muscle, when they burst open or when they get blocked, a person can get a heart attack or a cardiac arrest. Other reasons for getting high blood pressure are eating too much salt. Because too much salt increases the amount of water in your blood, which also increases the amount of pressure on your arteries. This is also high blood pressure. And then of course stress and smoking and other bad lifestyle choices can cause high blood pressure. Now this is the end of 2.1 to 2.4. Please remember to learn your notes, practice some workbook questions 
And remember to make a summary, which you can retell in your own words. And please, please, whatever you do, don't keep reading the same text over and over. It works so much better to make a summary and retell everything in your own words and be able to explain it. Lots of luck, and I'll see you soon. Bye.